since the last time we talked about Godzilla and Log Horror, we've discovered several new series on YouTube. Some of them good, and some of them... Uh. So today, we're going to present some of the ones we found the most interesting, including Unknowingly, whose series we started in the last video, as well as Total Approximation and Protama Kun, two extremely underrated creators. This video serves as a showcase of the strange and disturbing world of Godzilla Analog Horror, but also explain things where we can, and offer constructive criticism. But don't worry, we'll be nice about it. But before we jump into the series, we need to do three things. Firstly, I'm Detective Mio. And I am Inspector Kido. Secondly, for anyone who doesn't know what Analog Horror is, here you go. Pause if you need. And thirdly, because we started unknowingly in the last video, here's a quick recap. In an alternate history of Toho in 1954, the dude who played Godzilla fell in love with the Godzilla suit and literally fuses with it. This is what they expected, this is what they found. The man in the suit, who we'll refer to as Suitman, bites Anguirus. And the same thing happens to that guy. Suitman then continues to genetically change, and now he's becoming more like Godzilla in the physical sense. He also kills a lot of people, but Toho still wants him in their films. And one more little thing before we begin. Do not harass any of the people in this video. Constructive criticism is perfectly fine, but sending unknowingly, and literally anybody else, death threats just makes you a terrible human being. I don't care what you think about the series, that just crosses the line. But without any further ado, enter the man in the suit. The next video is titled in Japanese. Translated, it reads, Suit Trial. In this video, our protagonist, Shy Guy, is sneaking around the Toho building and finds a tape labeled, again in Japanese, Conformity Test. The description reads, We are fully aware of the situation we are in. We will do our best to test what threw me to here so they can train him. We will try to do some audio tests. Let's start with the man in the suit. We have him in a cell. Make sure he is there until you can train him. He destroyed the light and only the darkness, but that's okay. We have a light. The last line in the actual video reads, we have night vision, so that might be a bit of translation. Please note, we use Google Translate, so this might not be the best. So they have Superman in a cell, and Toho intends on training him, somehow conditioning him with audio. Not too dissimilar from what happened in Pizza Simulator. The image that shows as they test the audio looks kinda like Godzilla's rear end, but the torso is really long, like ferret long. There is no response until a clip of Oppenheimer's famous speech plays. Then something, presumably the Superman, starts making screaming noises. It seems as though he's still triggered by the memory of the nuclear bombs. Afterwards, we can see part of him in the dark as some music plays, so maybe they plan on using music to control him? The next video is a tape that was mailed to Shy Guy. It's Suitman's message to the Americans, it seems. He hates them because of the Hiroshima bombing that killed his family while he was on a business trip. And he plans on restoring peace to the world by destroying those who wronged him. Spooky image! The description translates to... You took everything from me! In the next video, the uploader tells us they got two pieces of mail, but they're pretty sloppy looking. One is confirmation that the last tape was not sent by anyone at Toho, and the other told him that he was fired because Toho thought he was sus. But now, he has an imposter among them to send him tapes of what is going on. The first tape from his spy is titled Dorsal Extraction. Whoever's making these tapes says that they are unsure if the procedure will work, but they're going to try to get the suit man out of the suit. The man is cooperative, and they manage to cut off the dorsal spines. However, a video shows the spines growing back. The suit man attacked the crew after they were finished, and the cameraman held them off with a camera flash, which seems to hurt his eyes. We get a glimpse of the suit man, and the video ends on this image. So the man is now literally becoming Gojira, creating his own mutant body, and the suit around the face seems to be falling apart. The description reads, In the dark, I am beautiful. Today's subject, slavery. The next video in the series includes a tape that the spy acquired regarding the man of the Angerous suit. The tape is very short, only stating that Toho feels they are losing money on the Angerous guy because he won't appear on screen because he doesn't want to be seen. The spy then explains that they're trying to force him to be in a movie in which he will fight Superman again, and they're still treating him like an animal. So Toho is being really crappy, I guess. Slavery. The spy has info that Toho is planning on making a movie in which Godzilla will fight a giant moth. 
And you all know who this is. Oh, almost forgot to add this during the first recording session. The description reads, why can't they hear? I just want to go back to being human. On to the next video. In the next video, we learn that Shy Guy thinks he's in too deep now to get out. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. And things just keep on getting worse. Now the Superman has escaped from the latest movie set. Based on these news articles, it seems that the public is now aware that something weird is going on. Conveniently, an artist was taking some random photos, and a boy was running wild with the camera, and they both managed to capture images of the rogue creature man. The child also drew an image and described the creature as being very canny and looks more like a man in a suit than a real creature. He also states that the creature's face kept changing. This could mean numerous things. Toho jumps on the topic and claims that this is a promotional stunt for their new movie, while somehow preventing any more news coverage of the incident. So Toho's gone full government style and is censoring the media. And at the very end of the video, an image of a moth. By the way, not sure if we mentioned this already, but it seems that the Superman has indeed increased in size. This place, the outside air, the car, the window of the house. Will they just move on? Will we forget? And in the next to last video, Shy Guy gets more deets from his spy friend and learns what happened last time the Suitman escaped. The Suitman was apparently in pretty bad condition, including being lathered up with some glossy stuff and being exposed to extreme winds, and he was none too happy about it. I am having a very bad day! This, today, is one of the worst days that I've had in a long time. For the new movie Toho is shooting, the Superman won't be fighting another man in a suit, but instead he'll be duking it out with a puppet. Superman believes this puppet to be real, and at first Toho thinks that this is a good thing. But then they remember they need an actor in the lava suit thing thing. Luckily, and unluckily, some random woman volunteers. Her parents are happy for her, and everyone doesn't expect something to go bad. So of course, something will. The suit man wigs out during the shoot, and the end- the Superman wigs out during the shoot, and in the end, he bites the woman in the suit, and apparently her parents saw everything, so it's extra bad. They tried to save their daughter, but they are, and I quote, Both mauled to death by the man in the suit. But the production team actually do something. They use tasers on the Superman, but Superman escapes the set. Everyone then splits up into two groups. One team goes after Superman, and the other team stays with Mothra. Woman. Thing. You know, is this coming to my attention? We don't know the name of anyone in this series. Luckily, the spy who's been relaying all this information goes to look for the suit man. And they find the suit man in the forest, looking rather at peace. But then he sees them approaching, and he begins to shake violently. By the way, it's kind of funny how the person making these tapes talks about how the suit man's being mistreated, but then goes on to call him it in the most dehumanizing way possible. Superman then vomits red boiling liquid, which I guess might be his blood. Even though it was a defense, presumably, the team captures him anyway. Back with the Mothra woman, things aren't looking so good. It's kind of nice, you kind of build a bit of a trope during your own series, and then you kind of subvert the expectations, so I thought that was a pretty nice little twist. The text in this episode reads, Reborn. It's interesting to note that this series makes no mention of the original Masura movie, so in this alternate universe, Toho makes only Godzilla films. There's no mention of Ran or Rodan or anybody else. Also, fun fact, the Mothra suit from the first movie was gigantic. It was 33 feet long and required multiple actors to operate it. At the time this was recorded, the most recent video in the series contains several updates from the Shy Guy. Seven to be specific. The name of the video is Seven Updates. Cool. The first is that the spy happens to pass by a room with a Toho executive and a government figure, whatever that means. They were discussing the events surrounding the Superman, the Cocoon, and other ghastly news. We'll get to what exactly was said later, but the most important thing is that we now have confirmation that the government is involved with the whole mess. That explains how Toho was able to censor information so easily. The second update is that the Cocoon is located in a prop house, where they store various movie props from the shoots. Unfortunately for Toho, they are unable to remove the Cocoon due to it emitting a potentially dangerous orange gas when touched. Toho has since decided to keep it in the warehouse for the time being, and Shy Guy thinks they may be studying it. Third update, scientists revisited the site where the man in the suit expelled his blood. Now, based on the picture, it is a large steaming foaming puddle. The people now had to put on hazmat suits to even get close. Fearing what could happen in the area, they decided to shut it down for the time being. 
The fourth update is one of the people sectioning off the area claimed to see an eyeball inside the puddle. The eye in the puddle, if you will. And you must! Apparently, the others in the group were skeptical about the sighting, thinking it may be a hoax. I'm not sure if hoax is the best choice of words, but that's what they chose. Either way, they checked, but they couldn't find anything. Our fifth bit of info is that Toho is making another Godzilla movie, despite all the sinister happenings. And the sixth piece of news is that Shy Guy has received another letter from one of his daughters. It's a bit odd that he's telling us this, but I guess we need to know. That said, this could just be his personal journal entry. Also, if you see an image of the letter with a sound effect of a letter opening, Well, I appreciate the attention to detail, it kind of breaks the immersion when you think that whoever is putting these notes into a VHS tape is also taking the time to add sound effects. Kind of odd. His daughter misses him, and he's still stuck where he is until he can unwrap this mystery. He informs us that he's planning to try to interfere in the situation to stop another person from being suitmanized. Well, that's pretty good. This mission has now become urgent because the final bit of news is that he somehow got a piece of concept art of the new monster. And if you know the Order of Godzilla movie releases, y'all know who it is. We will now do a dramatic reading of the dialogue in the description between the Toho guy and the government person. We will not be doing it in Japanese accents because that might offend some people. Just because Kido is giving the government man an American accent does not mean that he's American. We already made our deal whenever it bit on to the angerous actor. Yeah, but we as a company don't want this anymore. Too late. It was your fault you made the second movie, then the one after that. I get it, I get it. But why do we keep it alive? Why do we have to keep it? That's classified information. But why must we keep it? If we took it and someone sees the abomination, both of us are going to fall. But if you do it, we'll be in your favor. We don't want to scare the public. Hmm, interesting. Besides, the deal was that we keep quiet if you supply us enough yen from your kaiju movies. Hmm, what I'm confused about is, whenever you took him to do the audio test in 1956, there was a tape that was misplaced with a speech that angered him. Uh, it was some sort of misinput. Are you positive? Hmm? Yes. Why must you make our company associate with it? Like the logo and everything. Stupid or something. Did not tell you that answer. I apologize. Hmm. <laughs> Forgiven. Just wanted to inform you that we have a script in the works for a movie with a three headed monster. And if you have another incident. Don't worry, this costume will be fitted with some puppeteering. Thicker skin made of material that he can't chomp on. We will be good. Good. If another incident happens, you'll be stuck to make another suit for Gojira. Hire a new suit actor. Make sure that suit is sanitized and clean. And what would you do with the man in the suit? That's classified information. That concludes all the videos in the series so far. On to our review. Now I have to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of the series, though I do see the appeal for some. I view it more as a creepypasta, more than an analog horror exclusively, though that can be said of most of the new series in this subgenre right now. Some parts are definitely overdramatic and trying to be edgy, and there are some other genuinely good ideas, which I appreciate, that he's trying out in the series, and it has been very interesting to see him grow as a creator. He recently reached 100k subs, and we wish him luck with his future endeavors. Looks like he has a lot of big stuff planned, and we can't wait to see what he does next. Hopefully, he finds this constructive criticism helpful, even if it's just a little bit. And unknowingly receives from us the Mood Award for having the most consistent spooky atmosphere. But before we leave the series, we have a word from unknowingly himself. Okay, editing Mio here. The plan was to include all the Q&As after the respective series. However, we figured that would bog down the video a bit too much, so we're going to put them all at the end of the video. So stay tuned until the end, where we will have a short interview with all the creators in this video. And check out our first video on Godzilla Analog Horror for a full interview with Unknowingly. The next series we'll be talking about in this video is by Total Approximation, and this series doesn't technically have a name, but we'll be calling it the Sarazawa Laboratory series. In this analog horror, we are introduced to a company called Sharazawa Laboratories. This particular video is an instructional tape for new members of the company. Congratulations on your new job. The company specializes in progressing science for the whole world. This entails things like biology, disease research, and bioengineering. We see some pics of the scientists, 
then we learn more of the company's rules and then we find out the company is going to be exploring a new type of research nuclear energy considering the fact that this series involves godzilla we all know this isn't going to end well The second video is called Ocean Test 2, and in this video we see that a crew of some unnamed company, possibly something related to Sarah's Oil Labs, is obtaining readings based off of some findings of the area, when they encounter some subjects that, that shouldn't be there. That's suspicious. And there's also some radiation signatures present there that weren't there last time. By the way, one might question if this series is really an analog horror if most of what we see is an HD 1920 by 1080 footage, but I digress. Going back to the ocean test, the crew pursues the subjects and calls in for security personnel. After finally stopping and boarding the subject boat, the security finds radiation suits, weapons, and several barrels of unknown substances. Not just one substance, apparently. All this under nets of fish. The subjects are then arrested and dubbed fishermen. The fishermen are taken into questioning. The video ends with this message. The contents of this tape contain highly confidential information under no circumstances are copies to be made. To ensure the security of this tape, allow only authorized personnel to handle it. Failure to comply will result in termination and prosecution to the fullest extent. So far, the series has sort of a slow beginning, and we'll see that the series as a whole is a bit of a slow burn. The series focuses for the most part on world building, so it feels a bit more like an analog mystery series than an actual horror series. Also, this series is the only one that features consistent voice acting, so that does kind of boost the production value. In the next video, we are back to the same style of tape as the first intro tape. And we see that Dr. Sato, one of the doctors we saw earlier, has taken credit, along with the rest of his team, for discovering a species. The species is given the identification number 2016, which if you know your Godzilla, then you recognize this as the year that Shin Godzilla was released. Which would explain why the organism seems somewhat familiar. A special laboratory is being specifically designed for it. Finding this new species is a big deal, which is why they make a whole new lab just for studying it. Dr. Sato shares some words saying that this will change our understanding of life and more yada yada blah blah blah, blah th same things that scientists always say before ending the world. Next video features Dr. Friedman making audio logs on his testing of the new species. The tapes are recorded on October 9th, 1981. So if we didn't mention when this takes place, now you know. On October 11th, Friedman still can't figure out what the heck this creature is, so he passes off to Dr. Sarazawa. Unfortunately, checking in in November, it seems that Sarazawa's team didn't have much success either. But based on the creature's physiology, they determined that it must have been able to survive depths of the ocean not yet explored. They also determined that this creature was about to undergo a new mutation when they found it. Later that month, Friedman complained that Sharazawa had cut the funding research in favor of nuclear energy research. This leaves Friedman peeved, blaming the company's allyship with the Americans. Ever since our partnership with the Americans, everything has been a mess. If only Sarazawa had the spine to stand up to them. The voice acting in this episode isn't too bad at all, although the assistant sounds uh, a little weird. Oh my, what a beautiful creature. It sure is, Doctor. Quite the big eyes on it, too. <laughs> yes, Doctor. <laughs> the following video is about the interrogation of the fisherman from earlier. The interrogator asks questions like, Who was your employer? What was your mission? What's your social security number? What's the last four of your credit card? But for the most part, the fishermen don't talk. The length of the interrogation has gone for longer and longer for some reason, some of them going up to 48 hours. You. Okay, okay, okay. Finally, the last person gives a little bit of insight about what's going on by saying that he was the only non-professional there. That's all I got, man. I wasn't like the rest of these guys. I, I mean, they all seem like trained professionals. I'm just a guy who worked in the industry, you know, merc for hire type stuff. I've been in it long enough to know not to ask questions. I just do it for the money. But due to his level of cooperation, he's still suspected of lying. Definitely this series leans more into the sci-fi mystery aspect. Not as scary as the other series, but it is the easiest to understand and follow, as well as doing the best job at world building. I just wish they would format the videos a little differently, like get a slightly better VHS filter. The next video features a break-in and the strange creature is stolen. But who was doing the stolen? It was kept in some clear ice block looking thing, and security was black, so I guess it really is just that easy. For some reason, the security footage is just stills. I mean, to be fair, it probably would be pretty hard to get a shot like this on a low budget and everything, unless you know Blender. This does look kind of weird.
The episode after is by the Whale Institute. While recording the whales known to the area, they hear some not so common sounds. But upon an investigation, they find nothing. But they plan on going out to search the area later. The next upload is a TV hijacking, where, in between some not super convincing commercials, a creepy video starts playing with the words, A new dawn is coming. Will you be ready when it happens? This is back to a trailer for Phantom of the Opera. Whatever this person is planning, it seems to have America in its sights, because the TV programming was American. Usually Godzilla first appears in Japan, but this series could have other plans. Perhaps Dr. Friedman is still butthurt about stuff and is going after the Americans. In response to the break-in that happened two episodes ago, Sherozawa Labs is moving their research to a place called Odo Island Research Outpost. This is to boost security and allow for easier access to marine studying. Those in the know would recognize the name Odo Island as the original sighting of Godzilla in the 1954 film. The video then lays out how the building will be arranged, as well as stating the facilities will be made to support nuclear research. I have to kind of like this part of the series because it's interesting, like going back and forth between different stuff going on. Like, oh, there's a break in. Also, there's a TV hijacking. But back in with the Sarazawa Labs, they want to make a new outpost and everything. It kind of just ties things together pretty nicely. And in the next video, we're going back to the Whale Institute, as they are now investigating the sounds from earlier. They discover a sunken ship, but they aren't able to access any part of it since they don't have the proper tools. <laughs> that accomplished absolutely nothing! Though they couldn't come to a conclusive analysis, they did find what looked like bite marks. They set up cameras around the perimeter, but the cameras malfunctioned after detecting frequent motion. Worthless cameras. However, the picture cameras they set up did actually capture an image, which is this. Spooky! Despite looking for the creature in the picture for two days, they could not find it. Boy, they really gave up quickly. Compared to how short some of the previous episodes are, this one seems a little overly long. Although understandable, considering what to share this cool footage, I might still cut it down just a smidge. In the next video, Birth of Godzilla, we see what looks like an atomic bomb going off, what appears to be a fully mutated version of the unknown species that was stolen. There are tanks firing at the thing and people are running and it's kind of hard to tell where and when this takes place. Uh, presumably this might be a flash forward or maybe a flash back or something. So basically we can see that this series is definitely an alternate version of Shin Godzilla. In the final video at the time of this recording, we are looking at the security footage of two cameras on Odo Island that detect an unidentified creature approaching the island. That creature being Shin Godzilla. Because not many people were on the island, no one got hurt. Though there was some light damage caused by the creature merely passing by. Dr. Shemurazawa orders everything to be cleaned up, and because the creature just passed through, it's determined that the beast was not part of some kind of targeted attack. So, I guess that's comforting? No one knows where the thing is going, and no one's alerted the authorities, so I guess we're just gonna pretend nothing happened. Perhaps this creature's on its way over to America to exact some kind of revenge. So anyway, that's the series so far. Um, overall I'd say the series is pretty good. I like it. Yeah really not bad. There are some things that, you know, could be improved about it and whatnot, but overall the narrative is rather interesting. I just wish there are like more episodes or something because it'd be nice to like continue going through the story further and further and further, but you know what? He has other things to do, so I understand. I also appreciate it mainly because it's different from the other previous series where a lot of other things seem inspired by like the Supermation Trials and everything. This one's definitely more kaiju centric. Indeed. That's kind of what I would probably lean into more if I was creating a series is just do something in the world of Godzilla as opposed to of the more meta storytelling. The world building is good, and it has a pretty engaging storytelling format. Hopefully as the series continues, it'll continue to build up on the story and everything, become a really good horror, like mystery series and everything, and we already have a bunch of characters in the mix, so we can revisit them and do different things and whatnot. I don't know, I'm just kind of excited to see where it goes. Total Approximation gets the award, Hold Up, Let Him Cook, for being a slow burner series that already is paying off. Now on to our next series, but don't forget, stay tuned till the end for our Q&A with Total Approximation. Now we move on to the third and final series of this video. The channel that made the series is called Protomakun, and he's a rather unknown creator with only around 600 subs. This is one of the most wild and unhinged series of the bunch, so let's dive in. Starting with the first video, titled Godzilla vs. Destroya, VHS, BTS. 
We start off with a rather classic disclaimer telling us that viewing this tape or distributing it is prohibited unless of course we have permission. The usual analog horror scary stuff. Actually, this particular disclaimer is one of the better written ones we've seen. The video we're about to see is a behind the scenes exclusive for Godzilla vs. Destroyer and contains footage from an unfinished movie, all this content that was not included in the final cut. Text appears on the screen basically saying that this film will be Godzilla's last, but there's other random bits of text that pop up occasionally implying that something is trying to communicate to the viewer. Doubtless. Whatever it is does not have good intentions, and based on the tone of the text, one could assume this is Godzilla talking. Now, one big strike against this series is that there's a lot of spelling errors. Most are forgivable, but it is quite distracting. The tape then tells us that this Gojira is not just some kind of man in a suit. He's very much real, and apparently, Godzilla, who definitely is the one talking to us now, thinks himself a god. The tape cuts to what looks like security footage of the Heisai version of Godzilla having a meltdown, in a brief shot of whatever the heck this thing is. What is that? What is that? Wait! It this Japanese text in the description, which translates to... Oh gosh. Let's take his description. Oh, this is very long. We might have to go take turns. <sighs> Behold, little creatures of the world. I am the irresistible force, the indomitable presence that paints over everything. I am Godzilla, the messenger of destruction and the embodiment of insatiable power. You have the audacity to challenge my supremacy. Your weapons and your hearts are just small items before my immense power. I am an unyielding giant, the apex predator of this realm. No force can extinguish the flame of my dominion. I am fire itself, engulfing everything with my unrelenting power. Okay, Kido, you can take over. If you hide behind your petty structures, know that I must bound by your petty concepts of death. I am beyond your understanding. I am God, far beyond your petty understanding. If you stand up to me, I will evolve, adapt, and transcend the limits you impose. Bye. You're... You certainly took it a, a little farther than I did. <laughs> I'll finish it up. Bow before me, before your eyes. I am a ruthless force that seeks power, a beast of hunger that feeds on the weakness of the world. I am Godzilla, the god of monsters, and I will continue to boast my absolute dominion until your existence crumbles underneath my immense power. Love, Godzilla. Well, that was extensive, to say the least. Okay, so... The series is so far kind of similar to the men in the suit. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. It's a bit rough with some of the spelling mistakes. The VHS filter used, similar to Total Approximation, should probably be swapped out for a different one. But the series has some strong bones so far, with a good strong beginning and original 3D animations. I believe, and I could be mistaken, that this is the first series we covered to do so, except for maybe L. Oswald. Now going a little further to the series, the next tape tells us that Gojira is going at a rapid rate. Now I have no idea who is telling us this, or who this tape was originally meant for. Can you read? But it doesn't matter because Godzilla, or Gojira, has escaped the facility. He always does. However, according to whoever's making the tape, it's not all bad because the procedure was a success, implying whatever is going on with Godzilla is a result of some kind of experiment. It shows the evolution of Godzilla's appearance, although I'm not sure where the number 49 years came from. Uh, maybe that ties into the timeline somewhere. We'll double check and cross-reference that later. Either way, now Godzilla looks a lot like the model from Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, All Out Monsters Attack, with the evil soulless eyes and the menacing grin. I guess he ate the person who tried to take a picture of him. Ugh. How unfortunate. They spot what looks like Godzilla bones outside the facility and send someone to go get some samples. But unfortunately for this random fellow, it's not just Godzilla remains that are there. Godzilla remains. This scene was actually pretty good. Whatever company is behind this, probably Toho, it always is, got some new info from the recording. Godzilla can crawl, he's smart, and he has glowing dorsal spines. According to the text, Godzilla's actually a suit, but currently it's being inhabited by some kind of godlike being. Okay. The company states that they now have to find a way to stop Godzilla. Good luck stopping a 
godlike being. The description reads, Hear me, man. The echoes of my evolution resonate through the ages and grow stronger by the minute. Just as you once tried to eradicate me, soon I will regain the upper hand. I am the force of nature that you cannot control, the embodiment of a primordial force that refuses to be suppressed. A wave of change is inevitable, and Godzilla's invasion will sweep the world like a merciless plague. Your attempt to eliminate me was only a feeble whisper to the roar of my impending resurrection. The time of reckoning is approaching, and you will witness the true power of Godzilla. In this episode, we see some more animations, which is cool because it's the best part of the series, and the story continues to progress some. Boy howdy, these descriptions are long though. They are thick with lore, however they are not quite necessary to understand the entire plot, so if somebody didn't want to do the deep dive, they could just enjoy the videos. <laughs> The next tape opens up with the company, but that's what we'll just call them from now on, has lost track of Godzilla and he's been spotted in several different places. It seems that he's continuing to mutate. It seems the last place he popped up was in the United States. This time we have footage of him transforming. He keeps just kind of burst out of his skin and move along with his day. Now we have the resemblance of Shin Godzilla, kind of similar to Total Approximation. Godzilla's skin is looking much more organic now and he's seeming to become less of a suit and more like a living being. In this new form, Godzilla feels pretty high and mighty and decides to invite himself into a nearby town and puts up residents freezing in place. Godzilla starts waggling his spines and his body heat starts to rise until he finally releases a burst of radiation in the form of a freaking inferno. After witnessing Godzilla's true destructive power, the company decides that humanity doesn't have much hope. GG gamers. Once again, the description is kind of long, so we'll just abbreviate it here. My successful evolution has given me unparalleled strength. Now that Earth is under my control, I will reveal my grand plan for conquest. The remainder of the message states that Godzilla is like a starfish in the way that he can split apart and multiply. He intends on using these Godzilla clones to take over the Earth for two reasons. One is to declare his sovereignty over the Earth, and the other is to maintain the natural balance, which the two are rather adjacent to each other, and kind of part of the same thing, but who am I to question Godzilla? The age of Godzilla begins, and the Earth submits to a new supreme ruler. The next video is basically a follow-up of the previous one by showing all the destruction and all the Godzilla clones waking up. The Shin Godzilla one seems to have grown two heads. That's interesting. The last message is in Morse code and reads... Breaking news! Godzilla has spread infernos across America, 86% of the country. The description is a first-hand account of what happened when Shin Godzilla split and formed two heads. We would read the whole thing, but uh, we're starting to get a little tired, so we'll read a little excerpt. As I stood there, my eyes widened in disbelief. In amazement, as I witnessed Godzilla, the colossal monster that was once a singular force, began to undergo an unimaginable transformation. A seismic energy pulsed through its massive form, and suddenly, the monstrous creature split into two distinct beings, each radiating supernatural power. Moving on to our next video, all the Godzillas are still burning the entire world. This first song is called A World on Fire. We then cut to a speech that says that there once was a man named Ishiro. Pause! The name in this speech could be Ishiro, as in Ishiro Honda, the original director of the 1954 Godzilla film. If that is the case, I personally wouldn't do something like that in the series. I would probably just create an alternate character to solidify that this is an alternative history. I don't think Potama kun had a malicious intent on doing this with his series, but I personally don't really like it that much. Not to say that this is objectively wrong, but more of a preference thing. Ishiro. Who's gonna call it Ishiar? I don't know what his name is. There once was a man named Ishiar, or something, who did some pretty bad things, and in an attempt to make up for his sins, he turned to forbidden rituals involving offering a vessel to a god in a way that would somehow forgive his sins. The vessel was the Godzilla suit, as we know, and the god was in fact some kind of devil who uses the Godzilla suit to start taking over the earth. Ishiar is now currently in the middle of a journey to try to defeat this demon, for the demon is extremely powerful. We see a picture of a fallen Godzilla with text that roughly translates to This is my endless cycle of rebirth, growing, dying, and evolving. 
Then we see the two-headed Godzilla mutate once again, this time looking like the model from Godzilla Minus One. But as we'll see later, the big one ain't done yet. The description reads, I write this letter to express my deep regret for the unintended consequences of my creation. The monster I brought to life was intended as a metaphor and a cautionary tale, but its effects spilled over into real-world chaos. I take full responsibility for the fear and suffering it's caused. My intention was never to cause any harm, and I'm deeply sorry for any pain my work may have caused. Like the end of the world! There's also some binary code that reads, By the time you receive this message, I might have perished to my own demon in its sadistic ways, but I've found a solution to defeat Gojira. The secret is, and we don't learn the secret, so that kinda sucks! This series has taken some, shall we say, unexpected turns. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, as it keeps it from being too predictable. From all the series that we've covered so far, this series is very much all over the place, and honestly I'm kinda here for it. Even if some parts of the animations look a bit scuffed, like the fire effects here, but the visuals for the speech part were actually pretty cool and very creepy. I like it. The final video at the time of this recording starts off with Protamakun saying thanks for 588 subs. Let's go guys, let's get him to 1000, we can do it. It cuts to a new helicopter being shot down by a multi-headed Godzilla dubbed Dabrusan, which I believe, based off of translation, means double? Then we cut again, this time to a picture of a Godzilla suit face that slowly starts morphing as we hear that Toho, of course, worked with the suit for a while and fed it meat, some of which was human flesh, in order to get the suit to cooperate. Then the suit somehow fell on some guy, knocking him into the pool and killing him. Toho does what they do best in analog horror and writes off the man, whose name is John, as missing and the suit takes care of the body. Back to the present, the Shin Godzilla minus one thing is still walking around and apparently so are little Zilla creatures. This particular type of jump scare has been used multiple times in the series now. In this area of the video, we see some text that is like typed in backwards. Uh, More deciphering, yeah! <laughs> Maybe this wouldn't be so tough if we weren't doing it all at once and you're just doing it video by video, but here we go. Basically, the text says that Earthro, whatever that is, I think I got that correct, unless I didn't. Earthro is in play, and there's nothing humanity can do to stop Godzilla, because it continues to spread and split off into more versions, with different abilities and powers. And they all have the same goal, to consume all blood of the species that created him for entertainment. Uh-oh, I think that means humans. And also, he won't forgive us for the things that we've done. He's unstoppable, and he won't stop destroying things until we're all gone. Yippee! Back in the past, Toho has finally released their film, back then in good old 1954, and is more popular than expected. Then they asked the suit for a sequel, and the suit requests human flesh. And it seems Toho was willing to give it some. It's not worth it! It's just not worth it! It requested flesh, and knowing that sequel to our film could bring us potential millions, we just had to comply. <laughs> the description of this video reads We hope this letter finds you well. We felt it necessary to address some alarming developments during the production of the Godzilla suit for our upcoming film. It appears that an unexpected and unsettling phenomenon has taken place, causing concern among the production team. In recent weeks, there has been signs that the monster inhabiting the Godzilla suit has become increasingly agitated and even aggressive as the production progressed. Initially, the team dismissed it as mere challenges in coordinating the suit's movements or glitches in the animatronics. However, the situation has escalated to the point where we can no longer ignore the peculiar occurrences. Two unfortunate incidents have transpired, resulting in the tragic loss of two staff members. While we grieve for our colleagues, it is crucial to note that these incidents appear to be related to the unusual behavior of the Godzilla suit. Witnesses reported that during moments of frustration or stress on set, the suit seemed to react independently, displaying signs of distress or anger. Our special effects and animatronics teams are working tirelessly to investigate the root cause of these occurrences. It is with great sorrow that we acknowledge the impact on our production and the profound loss of our colleagues. Safety measures have been enhanced and we are consulting with to ensure the well-being of everyone involved in this project. We understand the gravity of the situation and assure you that every effort is being made to address it properly. As we continue our investigation, we ask for your understanding and support during this challenging time. Sincerely, <laughs> TLDR, behind the scenes is mad sus. Review time, review time. Firstly, of the entire series, for us, it's a little bit difficult going through each description, like reading it off and everything, and reading through it, it becomes a little tedious, but for people who are watching the episodes as they're coming out, I think they'd be kind of fun and a little interactive. Is there an in-canon reason for why the text is backwards? I have no clue, but if I had to guess, probably. The series definitely isn't the best written, however, it's still pretty fun to watch. I would question whether some parts do get a bit 
dark and kind of bogged down in some parts, like introducing demons and ribald people and, and lots of death and creepy stuff. I get that's an analog horror, but maybe don't go too far, otherwise people might think that you're tryharding. There are a lot of original ideas in this analog horror, it's not just copying off of other people's works, and I really do appreciate the 3D animations and the time it must have taken to learn how to do it and then to create them. And this series, while not the absolute best in quality, is certainly more than worth a watch. Especially if you're interested in such a subject. And it's definitely the most wild and underrated, so check out his channel. Oh, uh, uh, award time, award time, award time. And Protomacoon gets the Off the Chain Award. For being one of the most fun series to cover in this video, as well as being just a bit wacky. And completely insane. Good job. Unknowingly does actually have some other words to share with his audience. It's a little bit late because this was back in November, but here we go. Thanks, John. My name's not John, it's, it's Keto. I do have additional information I would like to share. This is mostly directed to the audience. I'm just a bit baffled that this passion project is blowing up. I'm pretty excited about what's going to happen in the future. I'm planning big things, all the way from Ghostbusters to Jaws. I might not be the greatest or the scariest. The videos may not make sense, but all I want to do is tell a story. A story that touches on a lot of themes and topics that people may be too afraid to touch. I'm trying to do it in a respectful way. I'm just very thankful I get to boost this up and to spread what I'm doing to more people. I'm not just someone who wants to make a quick buck and sell t-shirts. All I want to do is tell a story. And also, I love cats. I have one myself. Her name is Mia, and she's a rescue. I don't know what else to add, so you can add this. Will do! Thanks, John. <sighs> We contacted Total Approximation and asked him a few questions, and he was kind enough to answer. Now, these answers were given to us via email. So, I will be reading them off in a kind of over-traumatized voice. This doesn't necessarily sound like Total Approximation. You can go to his channel and figure that out for yourself. Hello, Mr. Total Approximation. Howdy. Our first question is, what inspired you to make an analog horror? Well, I always wanted to explore the horror elements that the Godzilla franchise has touched upon, but never fully delved into. Analog horror is the format that allows me to explore these ideas in a way that is creatively experimental, yet conducive to my limited resources. I always had a passion for filmmaking, so in a way, YouTube has been that outlet that stretches that creative itch. Also, horror has always been my favorite genre, since I find that it has such a broad range of ideas it can explore. For me, a lot of my favorite horror movies are the slow burners, the ones that take their time and maintain an unsettling atmosphere. I want to use analog horror as a way to test myself creatively to see if that was something I could achieve. Interesting, interesting. So, what made you choose Godzilla? My channel was already focused on Godzilla, but geared toward collecting Godzilla toys. I want to expand my creativity into something totally different from that. The reason why it's Godzilla is because I've been a fan since I was a child. I wanted to take an approach to the character and world that was my own version. A sort of passion project slash love letter to the franchise. Seems like you love Godzilla almost as much as I do. Totally based. What made you go for more of a sci-fi approach to your story? For my series, I wanted to root it in a very real world capacity. Reimagining the character of Dr. Sarazawa was my way of entering into this world and exploring the way him and his group of scientists react to Godzilla. Using this as a starting point for the series allowed me to implement these scientists' perspectives, and the science element is something that will expand as the series continues. Well, I certainly found that aspect of the series interesting. How involved and complicated is the process of making a new episode? You know, editing, coming up with the story, and etc. It depends on the video. In terms of story, I have the overall story already mapped out, though elements evolve during my creative process. Once I'm working on an episode, I often find certain aspects come into play that I didn't think of before, which can change the scope of the video. Oftentimes, the video takes on a life of its own. Oftentimes, the videos take on a life of their own, so part of the challenge is knowing when to restrain myself from going too over the top, or being too overindulgent. My biggest challenge is making sure each video I make is up to my standard. Interesting, quite a- I can be a bit of a perfectionist, so sometimes I have to separate myself from my work and view it from my objective perspective. This process can be creatively exhausting, so I give myself time between each video to focus on other content on my channel. Truly a very- But maintaining that standard, while still providing new episodes to keep the audience's attention, is certainly one of the other bigger challenges. What are your plans for the rest of the series? There's still a lot to go. While I have the overall story planned out, my series will focus on lots of different characters, perspectives. As a whole, I really want to take a measured, thoughtful approach that allows for some unique concepts we haven't seen much represented in the franchise. With the story I'm telling, it can be somewhat slow, but for those that stick around, there will be a lot of surprises in store. Every video in the series is intentional and will connect to the story at some point or another. It's not going to go in the direction you think it is. I think it will be worth the wait. 
I'm gonna break character real quick. I am genuinely interested to see where this series is going. It's like, it's probably my favorite of the bunch just because of how similar it is to what I would want to do. So I actually am really excited to see what he's gonna do with this series. Yeah, I as well. Now to go on to the next question, will you make any other analog horror series after this? I thought about it recently, though I have no plans for that at this time. But wouldn't say that's a definitive no. While this current series has been a lot of work so far, it's been extremely rewarding both in terms of my own personal desire to create things, and also the generally positive responses people have had to it. And our final question, what is your personal favorite Godzilla movie? Shin Godzilla. As someone who loves not just Godzilla movies, but movies in general, this is one of my all-time favorites. It's way of telling the story, and its concepts was such a large inspiration for my analog series and my channel. From a filmmaking perspective, I think it's a perfect movie. Stylistically, technically, the acting, the cinematography, the color palette, I could go on and on, but has such a restrained and intelligent approach to the genre, there's probably not a day I don't think about it. It is a marvel in filmmaking, and has forever captured my imagination. <laughs> Holy based! I must say we haven't contacted him since uh, Minus One came out, because this video started a long time ago, so you may go to his channel and ask his opinions on Godzilla Minus One if you want to see how that compares to Shin Godzilla. So, total approximation, is there anything extra you'd like to share about your series or your channel? Aside from my analog horror series, I do Godzilla toy news and reviews, and sometimes other content occasionally. I'm always coming out with new videos pretty often, and thinking of ways to diversify my content, so definitely check it out. And check it out you should! Thank you for the Q&A Total Approximation, we really did enjoy your series, so if you want to check it out, his channel will be linked in the description down below. And now we have our Q&A with Pro Tamakun himself. Hello, Protopakun. What's up? Not much. The sky. Anyway, here are some questions. What inspired you to make an analog horror? What inspired me to create an analog horror were mainly the Mandela Catalog and Happy Meat Farms. I watched those two from a reaction video from 8-Bit Ryan and Baz and was terrified by the concepts. Then a few months later, I came across the man in the suit by Unknowingly, who really tipped the iceberg for the series. I had to thank them for this to even happen. Seems like you were inspired by some pretty interesting analog horror series. True! But, but what made you choose Godzilla? Godzilla was an easy character to get on Source Film Maker, which is the software I use. What I'm currently on as I'm writing this, to make the videos. Oh well, the animations. I started this series mainly to learn how to animate, like a little passion project of something I loved. Just improving over time with my childhood icon. Seems like you're giving it your all. True! Okay. How involved is the process of making a new episode? Editing, coming up with a story, all that kind of stuff. Honestly, really dreadful. I find myself getting burnt out often from it, but I keep pushing on because I believe I can reach better and better goals. However, I'm no near a writer, so the story might be out all over the place. And factor in software bugs, editing mistakes, and corrupting files, it gets annoying. But if I can at least see people enjoy what I enjoy, it's all that matters to me, really. But to be fair, it's fun packing a bunch of lore into something. It's like making a huge puzzle for people to solve. I feel like Scott Cawthon. So, why did you choose to animate in Source Filmmaker? I only had two options, really. Either Source Filmmaker or Blender. When coming into this, I knew nothing about animation whatsoever. I only tried SFM once, and it was a nightmare to use. But Blender, that was like playing 6D chess on a Rubik's Cube. So I just stuck with SFM. Eventually, after a while, I eventually learned how to make my first animation, which is a guy game with a Godzilla clip. Ironically, I might reuse it in the future video if it's obscure enough. Interesting. Maybe I'll try to learn Source Filmmaker someday. Good luck! Okay, what are your plans for the future of the channel? Any future projects? My three projects I'm planning on doing are as followed. Delving into the early years of what happened to Gojira during 1951 and in 1984, the second one being a Kiryu trial-esque spin-off, although I don't have high hopes for it, and inevitably a Five Nights at Freddy's analog horror. How would you love me to do? Har har har. Har 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 Okay, and one more question, sort of, although it's not really the last question, but it's the last major question. What is your personal favorite Godzilla movie? To be completely honest, I would say Shin Godzilla, but I'm not big with politics. So far, my favorite film and all-time favorite Godzilla as of now is Godzilla Minus One. I'm fanboying super hard right now, but like, come on! Just imagining a Minus One Godzilla with the same look as Shin Godzilla. That would be awesome! Indeed, it would be rather interesting. I'm, I wonder if anyone will put together an edit someday. Who knows? Is there anything extra you would like to add? The news is yeah. In 1951, I made a mistake. How this would be the solution to our problems. End up being a nightmare for all of us. That thing is no human. It's a benevolent beast. It should even be alive. Why did I think it would be a solution? Just why? It'll comply. No need to be satisfied its needs. How do we keep this thing at bay before it decides to take matters into its own hands or claws and decides to rip people at bay? Why did I do this? Why? 
if you made it to the end of this video, you're a legend. Boy, that was a wild ride, and we've given you three Godzilla Analog Horror Series that we think you should check out if you're interested. And if you want to go support the creators, you can go check out the channels in the description below. And if you would like to support us, please feel free to like the video and subscribe, as that'll encourage us to keep making videos. And if you have any constructive criticism on our video, feel free to go put them in the comments down below. We're always looking to improve, and there are probably some mistakes in here somewhere, because this is a really long video. It took a long time to make. But if you want to go watch one of our other videos, you can go watch this one over here, or this one over here. But until we see you there, he's Mio. And he's Keto. And we hope that you have a blessed day. Bye! We may or may not make a video talking about the problem with Godzilla and the core, such as copycats, but just in case we don't make it, don't hold your breath. Okay, now actually, bye.